Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going over an actual worked example on the same frame that I used to introduce the concept of frames and machines. Uh, but this time I've applied some actual numbers to these forces that are acting on it. And what we want to do is we basically just want to find out what the reactions are at point A and F. So this is basically a two-step process. Uh, the first step is we draw a free body diagram of the whole structure and then we'll solve for as many reaction forces as we can. Uh, but I can see here there'll be those, there's actually going to be four unknowns and we only have three equations of equilibrium so we won't be able to solve for all of them. Uh, and then after that we'll take what we can get and then we'll draw an exploded diagram of the whole structure basically giving us individual free body diagrams of each member and then we'll go one force, one unknown force at a time solving for as much as we can and then eventually we'll use those to, uh, to solve for what our reaction forces are here at A and F. So to get started the free body diagram of the whole thing looks like this. So we have the, uh, so these are pin supports so there's there really is only one force at each but we, we break it out into two components. So we have AX and AY and FX and FY. So what we want to do is, uh, looking at this, we'll be able to solve, I think, for AX and FX. Uh, and the way that we'll do that uh, is, we'll start with the sum of moments in, uh, we'll start with the sum of moments about A. How about we do that? So we'll start with the sum of moments about A. We can maybe define this as our positive sense. Uh, so looking at this, uh, the moment caused by this force about A will be 10 kilonewtons times its distance, which is 0 0.25 meters. So 10 times 0 0.25. Uh, and then we have the moment caused by Fx, so that'll be Fx times uh, the distance, the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force, so 0 0.5. Uh, and then the only other thing that will cause a moment about point A is, is this force down here because all of the other forces pass, their line of action passes through that point. So uh, we can just bring this over to the other side of the equation already because it, would, it causes the object to rotate in the opposite sense. So we'll have 5 times uh, the distance, uh, that perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force, which is one, uh, 1.25 meters. 1.25 meters. All right, uh, so this just reduces to f of x is equal to 7.5 kilonewtons going in that direction. All right, it is in uh, the direction that we we assumed it. We assumed the direction correctly. All right, and now all we can do is we'll just do the sum of forces in the x direction for the whole structure, uh, and this is going to give us negative 17.5 kilonewtons or we can also say that that is just 17.5 kilonewtons in that direction in the opposite direction to what we assumed. Now if we try and take the sum of forces in y direction we're going to have two unknowns so that's as far as we can go using the entire structure as a whole. So now what we want to do is we will draw the exploded diagram uh, which is going to break out all of the members and their free body diagrams. So in total, when we look at this exploded diagram, we actually have nine unknowns. It's AX, AY, FX, FY, T, CX, CY, and DX, DY. Those are all our unknowns. But we did calculate, uh, we did calculate A, what was it? A, A, FX and AX. So we can actually draw, we can update those. AX actually was going the other way. So before we confuse ourselves, we should draw this on the direction that we actually know it's going. So we have AX is going that way, and that is uh, 17.5 kilonewtons. And FX was going to the right. We had that sense or the direction properly, so it's 7.5 kilonewtons going this way. So that was 7.5 kilonewtons. All right, so we have those nine unknowns. We actually know two of them, so really there's only seven unknowns in this problem. And we actually have three, uh, we have three sets of three equations. We have the three equations of equilibrium, so sum of forces in x, y, and sum of moments uh, that we can apply to member A, B, C. We can apply the same three equations to member F, E, D, or D, E, F, whatever you want to call it, and then member C, D. So we actually have nine equations that we can work with and seven unknowns. So at this point, we're just, we just need to plug and chug and just figure out all of the possible unknowns that we can find. 
So, uh, let's get started, I guess. Uh, maybe let's do this in black, so it's just not everything is written in blue. Uh, so, for member ABC, maybe I'll just write like this. So, for member ABC, uh, the first thing that's jumping out at me is I can take the sum of forces in the x direction. There's only two forces here, so we have, if we want to write this, sum of force in the x direction. We basically have 17.5 is going to the left and Cx is going to the right, so then we have Cx. So Cx, the, we've correctly assumed the direction, and, and this is going to be 17 point five kilonewtons going off that way, which means here on this diagram that we've also solved for that. So this is also 17. It's the same, it's the same reaction. So 17.5 kilonewtons going that way. All right. Uh, what else can we do? What's the next easiest thing I think would be to, you don't always just solve the whole member, one member at a time. You actually kind of have to jump between the, a few. So I think the next thing that we should do is we'll take a look at member, uh, member CD. And here, if we take the sum of moments about point D, so we'll do sum of moments about point D, uh, we will have this force. So if you remember this direct, uh, this distance here, we'll just check the geometry. Uh, each of these legs is 0 0.25, and this distance here is also 0 0.25. Okay. So when we come down here, the moment that's caused by this 10 kilonewton force it will be... 10 times 0 0.25 and that would be the clockwise sense and then these two forces actually will give us counterclockwise sense so we'll put them on the other side of the equation so we'll have cy times 0 0.25 and uh, 17.5 plus 17.5 times uh, the sum of those two is 0 0.5 all right, so if we just solve through that, we, uh, we're going to get Cy is equal to negative 25 kilonewtons. All right, so this negative sign, this is important. This means that just the way that I drew these arrows initially was, uh, is not the way that it's actually uh, really happening in the system. So that's fine. We can just, uh, we'll just change the orientation of those arrows as we go. Um, so the CY actually points down in this case, and in, on this member it's pointing up. Okay, so we can just drop this in. So that is 25 kilonewtons, and this is 25 kilonewtons. Cool. Um, now we can just take the sum of forces in the x direction, and we're getting dx is equal to well, 17.5 minus 10, so that will be equal to 7.5 and it's positive so that means that the the direction that we assumed was is not changing so dx here is 7.5 kilonewtons and dx here is 7.5 kilonewtons okay so that was dx uh, the next thing that we can do i think we can get one more out of this member cd we can probably find the sum of forces in the y direction yeah, because we have Cy here is 25 kilonewtons up, and the only other force with a Y component here is this dy. So if we just go down here and do sum of forces in Y, dy is equal to negative 25 kilonewtons. And again, that just means that we just had the wrong sense there. So again, we'll come in here, we'll update that direction. So this dy is... 25 kilonewtons going down, and uh, on this side we have 25 kilonewtons pointing up like that. All right, let's bounce back to member ABC now. Uh, so we'll actually be able to find out what T is doing the sum of moments about A. T here is equal to negative 50 kilonewtons. Again, we'll switch the direction on those guys. All right, what else can we do? Member DEF, we haven't even done anything down here, but it looks like we've actually filled out all of these values except for FY. One thing that I want to do is uh, maybe I'll make it so for DEF we'll do it down here DEF what I want to do is I just want to check that the sum of moments about a uh, sorry the, the sum of moments about F here is, is checking out so we'll do sum of moments about F and if this doesn't if this doesn't add up then we'll know that we've done something wrong so we get T is equal to to 50 kilonewtons, positive 50. So there we go, we, uh, we had that sign of the, that direction perfect on there. So it looks like we're on track. 
All right, so the next thing that we can do is, I guess we wanna find, we found all these other variables, but we do want to find uh, FY and AY, because those are still the outstanding ones that we have. So if remember ABC, if we just do now the sum of forces in the Y direction, so that gives us an AY is equal to, uh, what do we have here, 25 minus 25 kilonewtons. And uh, there we go. So we actually have, uh, again, looks like we're going to have to switch the direction here on what's actually happening. So point that down. Uh, so we actually have AY is equal to 25 kilonewtons. We drop the minus when we switch the direction. And then the last thing that we do is, remember DEF, um, we'll come down here and we'll do, we'll finally do the sum of forces in the Y direction. We're going to get FY is 30 minus 25 plus 5, so that will be, uh, sorry, 50 minus 25 plus 5, that's 30 kilonewtons. And that's positive, so that is going up, and that's great. So we, we did the sign, or we assumed the direction correctly on this one, so this is... 30 kilonewtons, all right. So the point of the question, or the, the point of the problem was to find the reactions. So the final answer of the reactions, so AX is uh, 17.5 kilonewtons uh, to the left. AY is 25 kilonewtons uh, downwards. And then what else did we have? We had Fx is uh, 7, no, oh, what's that? 7.5 kilonewtons uh, to the right. And Fy was 30 kilonewtons to, uh, in the upward direction. So there we go, that's our final answer. And if you're curious, you can check uh, you can check, you know, back at the original structure um, where we had five kilonewtons going down, and if we take the difference between between these, we have thirty kilonewtons going up and twenty-five kilonewtons going down. Uh, for that to sum to zero, yeah, we would need that extra five kilonewtons for this whole structure to be in static equilibrium. You can check the difference uh, uh, in if if we applied seventeen point five kilonewtons to the left and then seven point five to the right. Uh, that's a net of 10 kilonewtons to the left, and this structure also has 10 kilonewtons to the right, so it's all in equilibrium there. And you can even check these numbers if you want. You can just pick random, uh, you can try some of moments about like point C on member A, B, C, and see if it all checks out, and uh, and it does. So there you go. It's uh, There's a lot of jumping around in this type of problem, but we were able to to solve for the reactions for this, for this frame problem uh, by first drawing the free body diagram of the whole thing and then the exploded diagram and the free body diagram of each member uh, and then kind of one force at a time we were able to find those final the, the actual reactions uh, at those supports.